To most people, it's just a list of numbers. But to those who understand its secret, it's a code, a pattern, a map hiding in plain sight. Long before this number sequence was found in art, nature and secret societies, it appeared in a dusty book written by a man history almost forgot. His name was Fibonacci, and his numbers still shape the world. In the year 1170, in the busy Italian city of Pisa, a baby named Leonardo was born into a family of merchants. His father, Guglielmo Bonacci, worked with ships and numbers, traveling the seas and trading goods from faraway lands. At that time, Pisa was a powerful city full of opportunity, but the people still used old ways to count, writing clumsy Roman numerals on tablets and needing special tools just to do simple math. Pisa wasn't just any city. It was one of the busiest ports in Europe, where ships from across the Mediterranean arrived with goods and gold. But even in this modern center of trade, people still relied on Roman numerals, which were difficult to calculate with. Just adding or dividing large numbers took time and special tools and even small mistakes could cost someone a fortune. When Leonardo was still a young boy, his father was sent on an important mission to Bugia, a city across the sea in North Africa. Bugia was part of the Islamic world and known for its science, books, and trade. Guglielmo took Leonardo with him, not just to learn business, but to learn from a different world altogether. In Bugia, Leonardo saw something that didn't exist in Pisa. People weren't using stones or Roman numerals to calculate. They were writing with digits that looked simple and fast. He noticed a strange but powerful symbol, a zero. These were the Hindu Arabic numerals used in the Islamic world, but almost unknown in Europe. Leonardo began to study with Muslim mathematicians who had learned from India, Greece and Persia. He didn't just memorize rules, he understood how the system worked. For the first time, he saw how place value and zero made math easier, faster and more flexible. It was like learning a new language and that spoke through numbers. Leonardo didn't stop in Bugia. For years, he traveled across the Mediterranean, learning everything he could about how different people used math in their daily lives. Whether he was in a busy marketplace or a quiet library, he asked questions, took notes, and filled his mind with ideas that no one in Europe had seen altogether before. When Leonardo returned to Pisa, he saw things differently. While others still struggled to add with Roman numerals, he carried a system that could multiply faster, solve puzzles more clearly, and even explain how the world around us works. He had something powerful, and he was ready to share it. Leonardo began to write a book unlike any other in Europe. It would teach merchants how to calculate faster, help teachers explain math more clearly, and eventually change the way we all count. The boy from Pisa had returned, not just with knowledge, but with a message that would cross centuries. Leonardo had seen the future of numbers. In North Africa, in Syria, in Sicily, he had learned the fastest, clearest way to calculate. But in Pisa, people were still trapped in the past. He realized that if Europe was ever going to change, someone had to explain the new system, clearly, patiently, and completely. That someone would be him. In the year 1202, Leonardo began writing Liber Abaci, the Book of Calculation. It wasn't just about math, it was about solving real problems that people faced every day. Currency exchanges, profit shares, debt, weights and measures, everything merchants needed to survive. One of Leonardo's boldest ideas was the use of zero. Most Europeans had never seen it before. 
Some even feared it, but zero gave meaning to place value. It turned one into 10 and 10 into 100. Without zero, there's no decimal system and no modern math. One clever puzzle in the book asked, how many rabbit pairs will appear in one year if every pair produces another pair after two months? This simple idea created a pattern, a pattern that would one day become famous, the Fibonacci sequence. Not everyone welcomed these strange new digits. Some merchants called them dangerous. Officials feared they could be forged too easily. In some cities, Arabic numerals were even banned. But others, especially young traders and scholars, saw their power. Even though it wasn't printed, Liber Abaci began to travel, one hand-copied manuscript at a time. In cities like Florence and Genoa, teachers used its lessons to train new merchants. Quietly, Leonardo's ideas were taking hold. By 1228, Leonardo completed a revised edition of Liber Abaci, refining his explanations to make them easier for new readers. He wasn't just sharing math, he was teaching how to think, how to calculate, and how to make sense of the world with numbers. Slowly but surely, the change had begun. One merchant, one classroom, one scroll at a time. Leonardo didn't shout, he didn't rule, he didn't conquer, he simply taught. And those who listened never calculated the same way again. After Liber Abaci, Leonardo didn't try to become famous. He didn't open a school or chase praise. Instead, he kept working, quietly, privately. While others traded in markets, he traded in ideas. And the problems he began solving were far more advanced. Word of Leonardo's skill had reached powerful ears. Emperor Frederick II, known for supporting science, sent scholars to challenge him. They didn't just want answers, they wanted to test the best. Leonardo responded with Floss, the flower. It was a book filled with brilliant answers to some of the hardest problems of the time. Without modern symbols or tools, he found ways to solve equations that would puzzle even advanced students today. In Liber Quadratorum, or the Book of Squares, Leonardo turned to number theory, math with no measurements or money, just pure logic. He explored how squares behave, how they add up, and what patterns they form. His work was centuries ahead of its time. Fibonacci didn't forget the real world. In Practica Geometria, he explained how to measure land, calculate building heights, and solve geometry problems using simple tools. Builders and engineers learned from his clear, practical style. Leonardo also wrote letters, answering questions from other thinkers. But many of these writings are gone, lost to time. What survived shows a man who loved sharing knowledge, not to win, but to help others understand. In 1240, the city of Pisa gave Leonardo a rare reward, a public payment just for being wise, they called his work useful, brilliant, and worth honoring. It was the last time history would ever mention him. After that final mention, Leonardo vanished from the records. No one knows when he died. No one knows where he was buried. There are no paintings of his face. But his ideas lived on in every number we use today. Six hundred years after Fibonacci died, a French mathematician named Edouard Lucas rediscovered the curious rabbit problem in Liber Abaci. He gave the number pattern a name, Fibonacci numbers, and the world began to notice them again. Fibonacci numbers started turning up everywhere, inside flowers, in the shape of seashells, in the arms of spiral galaxies. While not everything in nature follows the sequence exactly, it often appears when growth, space and energy work together in balance. As Fibonacci's sequence gained attention, people linked it to something called the Golden Ratio, a number around 1.618. Some say it's a perfect proportion found in great art and design. 
but the truth is more complex. The connection is real, but sometimes exaggerated. Fibonacci shows up in movies, books, and video games. From secret codes in the Da Vinci Code to classroom cartoons, the numbers are everywhere. Sometimes the stories are true, sometimes they're stretched. But one thing is certain, people remember his name. In computer science, Fibonacci numbers are more than just cool patterns. They help design fast algorithms, control how data is stored, and even improve search tools. The same numbers Leonardo once used to count rabbits now help power the digital world. Fibonacci numbers are even used in financial markets. Some traders use them to guess where prices will rise or fall. But not all experts agree. Some say it's real math. Others call it wishful thinking. Even centuries later, his numbers still cause debate. Today, students across the world learn Fibonacci numbers in school. They use zero every day. They write digits just like the ones Leonardo brought home centuries ago. His ideas became part of how the world learns and thinks. Leonardo of Pisa didn't invent the numbers. He didn't ask for credit, but he saw the power in ideas and he made them easier for the world to understand. He showed that one person sharing knowledge can change everything. Hello and welcome. We're excited to share some great news. Our new website is officially live. You can now visit us anytime at www.miguromedia.com. This site is designed especially for students, teachers, and curious minds who want everything we've created. Documentaries, articles, references, and learning tools all in one place. So whether you're looking to revisit a topic, find further reading, or use our materials in the classroom, our website will be your go-to hub. The site is still a work in progress, so you might come across a few unfinished pages or small glitches. We appreciate your patience, and we'd love your feedback to help us make it even better. Again, that's migoromedia.com, your space for engaging, well-researched learning content. Feel free to explore, bookmark it, and share it with fellow educators and learners. And thank you for being part of this journey with us. If this story moved you, even a little, please consider liking the video, especially our loyal subscribers who see it first. It really helps the algorithm share it with more people who might need to hear it. And if it didn't resonate with you, we'd still love to hear your thoughts. Honest feedback helps us improve and make better content. If you'd like to see more stories like this, you know where to find us. You can also reach out on social media. Links are on the screen and in the description. We'd love to connect. Thanks for being here. Stay thoughtful, stay curious.